I hope your day is full of clam chowder and lobster bisque and split pea and matzo ball and lentil soup and mm, I wasn't planning on starting with clam chowder. Clam chowder is kind of a gross one to start with. I feel like you have to work up to clam chowder. Like maybe you normally start with a with a lentil. You start with a black bean soup. You start with a minestrone and then you hit the clam chowder. Opening with clam chowder is a weird vibe, but it is what it is and I roll with it. Um, I improvise and I adapt. Guys, we have an amazing episode for you this week of Shank with just me, Shank. Uh, I figured I would check in with you guys. I have a bit of a cold, so I didn't want to expose anyone to my sickness. And uh, I figured we'll just talk some shit and check in. Uh, I'm going to be at the Ontario Improv tonight. That is Wednesday. What's the date? Wednesday, March 16th. I'm going to be at the Ontario Improv at 8 p.m. for the Dirty Show. So that's going to be fun if you're in the Southern California area. Come out, support live comedy, watch your girl do some comedy. Um, are you someone who is wanting to support the show and you don't know how? I have the perfect answer. Oh, yeah, socks. Buy yourself a pair of socks and support your favorite podcast. What better way? Uh, oh yeah socks offers a variety of socks some of my favorite ones include the mr rogers neighborhood socks and the brady bunch socks they have socks for everyone no matter what your interest is there's definitely a sock for you so make sure to check out oh yeah that's three o's h y e a h dot com discount code sarah 10 for 10 percent off on all socks all right guys um let's get into it i got some questions for you from you and this is gonna be a fun pod someone said this i thought was a weird question and so it was so weird that i said let's answer this one first this question says would i move to arkansas first of all i if you were to bring me a map and say find arkansas i would say i don't know where it is I don't know if that's something I should be proud of. Um, but yeah, I don't know where Arkansas is on a map, so I can't say that I would be stoked to move there. And I don't think that I would fit in well in Arkansas. I feel like there aren't too many Jews in Arkansas. I feel like if you're a Jew, you get shot in Arkansas. Do you know what I mean? I feel like the <laughs> I feel like in Arkansas people eat potato salad out of tubs. I feel like in Arkansas people fuck their cousins. I just don't see me thriving in Arkansas. Um unless there's like a cool hipster part of Arkansas that I don't know about or maybe Arkansas gets a bad rap. I don't know. I've never been and I don't know where it is on a map. I bet a fifth grader could point out where Arkansas is on a map. Um, somebody asked me if I would rather not be able to taste my favorite food or not be able to hear music again. And I was like, what sick fucking worlds are we living in where these are the options? It's like two of the only good things that are left. Eating and listening. That's it. And masturbating sometimes you just gotta strip down and get to the bare the bare essentials like at the end of the day the most important things are love sleep food sex shelter i think that's it right i don't know was i planning on getting profound on this episode sometimes i do sometimes i don't the show goes where it goes you know that's the best part of listening to a solo episode of shank I think I'm going to start talking about something and then I end up in a rabbit hole talking about something else. Okay, there's something that's been on my mind and that's women with Monroe piercings. What is this about? You've decided that you need to have a fake mole on your face that emulates the late Marilyn Monroe? I don't, I don't get it. It's like, okay, you have a beauty mark. People people be having beauty marks and they're like, it enhances my face. 
because they have to you can't be like i have this beauty mark and it makes me feel worse you have to own the beauty mark but to go out of your way to get a, a mole that that's done with a with an earring in your face that's weird to me you just just to have a earring in your face there's no back on it it feels like it would get infected often and i'm not one to judge i love alternative culture i fucks with you know a piercing a tattoo give me a sleeve show me a septum ring i'm down for a good time but when it comes to the monroe piercing i strictly just can't understand it and i can't get behind it and um I'm glad we're we're getting to the bottom of this. It's like if you can't love me at my <laughs> Monroe piercing, then you don't deserve me at my clit piercing. When bitches quote Marilyn Monroe, it's never a good sign. Marilyn Monroe, okay, so she was like sexy and addicted to drugs and her dress blew up one time. And ever since then, people are like, damn, what an icon. Am I not seeing the true talent that is Marilyn Monroe? Like, do I have to go back to the Monroe catalogs and catch myself up? I figured, guys, we would have a chat. I don't know where this conversation is going, but I do know that you guys sent some other weird-ass questions, so let's look at the weird-ass questions you guys sent me. Um, all right, here we go. Hmm worst food at a comedy club it depends what comedy club i'm gonna go ahead and say the fruit salad if there's a fruit salad at a comedy club i can't imagine it being good i've never even seen fruit salad on the menu at a comedy club um but anything that's that's like anything that's too healthy at a comedy club i'd be wary of because it's like how often are there fresh ingredients in the kitchen of a comedy club unless it's flappers i fuck with their salmon um my worst comedy gig to date it's like how much time do you have i've done so many bad comedy gigs my worst one i think was when i performed in a bar and i couldn't get the audience to calm down for me to even talk into the mic so i just walked out um Favorite meal to have a Diet Coke with? Well, let me just explain this to you. There is no wrong way to have a Diet Coke. You can have a Diet Coke straight up over ice with a twist of lime. Sometimes that's that's a good way to go. If you're just in the car with the sun down, it's like 75 degrees, and you have a Diet Coke with a twist of lime, that's all a bitch needs. That's all a bitch really, really needs. Um... I don't think you can have Diet Coke with breakfast. Diet Coke with breakfast seems wrong. So I'm going to go Diet Coke with like a grilled cheese. I love a grilled cheese. I feel like, I feel like as we are entering into World War III, we need to embrace the grilled cheese more. Seek comfort in the things that provide comfort, such as cheese sandwiches with butter. <clears throat> will you ever stop smoking weed i smoke weed frequently but i'm on a break right now um will i ever stop smoking weed that's an interesting question um i think i'll smoke weed the only time i see myself not smoking weed is if i have a baby because i don't i wouldn't smoke during a pregnancy um and then after not smoking for nine months, it will be interesting to see if I'd want to continue to smoke. But yeah, sometimes it's nice to do a tolerance break. I had a psychiatrist told me tell me to do a 30-day tolerance break, and that was really beneficial. And I think I would do it again if I felt like I needed to clear my head. But I'm a big advocate of weed and of the plant in general, so I feel like... If I'm smoking weed and that's the worst thing I'm doing, I'm pretty much living a, a pretty clean life. Um, how did I get into comedy? I got into comedy when I was in my early 20s. 
I always knew I wanted to perform. I had a a love for stage of all kinds. Like I would do theater and I would do um, acting classes. I remember I took these acting classes from this fucking crazy bitch who is her biggest claim to fame was that she was like the Olsen twins acting coach. And so I was like, I got to go here. I got to go where the Olsen twins go. You know what I mean? She was a name dropper. There's lots of acting coaches in LA. They just be dropping names. They're all pissed that they didn't get to where they wanted to be. But anyways, I did at one point in my early 20s have this acting coach who completely changed the course of my life. His name was Doug Warhead. I think he might still be teaching today in LA. And I took a few scene study classes from him and he had everyone in the class prepare a monologue but he had me write a stand-up set because he felt that my sense of humor was my biggest asset so he really encouraged me to lean into that so I had the guidance of of um kind of like a mentor which helped and then I was able to craft my own stand-up set and I performed it in my uh scene study class in my acting class and then after that someone from my acting class or someone that I met at a doing backgrounds on a Muppet movie I was doing like background acting on a Muppets movie which was a dark place to be let me tell you because when you're at one of those things you're there all day long they treat you like cattle because basically you are you make like less than a hundred dollars and the whole time you're around freaks who are trying to get more money from SAG. They're like calling SAG like, excuse me, they sprayed us with water. Do we get a water bump? Do we get $45 more since we were sprayed with water? It's like all these crazy, manic, desperate, thirsty background actors. It's sad. it's a sad scene. But in doing that, I met this guy who was a nightmare who said, hey, come to the comedy store. And that's how I first got to the comedy store this guy who I was doing background acting with on a Muppets movie invited me to go to the comedy store and I did a bringer show at the comedy store and then I never left the comedy store and that was around 2010 so now here we are 2022 and a bitch a bitch is still out here hustling you know what I mean um my favorite way to take coffee okay so let me tell you about coffee coffee is one of the most important things in my life and luckily for me i'm dating someone who also really appreciates coffee so much so that he has fine he's got machines i don't know what's fucking happening in the kitchen but the man has the coffee situation on lock my favorite way to take coffee is um i like an oat latte i love an oat latte or just a little bit of cream But it's got to be the right cream. Bad creamer will fuck up your life. Nothing worse than that. Um, Are you a sativa person or an indica person? Sativa. Because I like to be functioning. I feel like indica is nice at the end of the day. After a long... um, after a long work day and after doing a comedy set I'll smoke indica to calm down before bed but for the most part I'm sativa all the way because I like getting stoned and, and being creative and I feel like sativa helps with that a lot when am I gonna come to Canada I don't know that's a good question I'm working on some road dates right now so stay tuned for that um Someone said, this is a weird question. A boyfriend with three dicks except one is on his head or a boyfriend with a single one inch dick on his knee. What? A boyfriend with three dicks except one is on his head or a boyfriend with a single one inch dick on his knee. I guess I'm going three dicks. Because one inch is like small. I'm not even a size queen, but a one inch knee dick. Why do I ask people to send questions? People send the questions and I read them and I'm wondering what I'm doing with my life. I'm like, let me let me have a nice day in the office. I read these questions and it's like, they're insane. Or a boyfriend with a single one inch dick on his knee. A knee dick is literally the most disgusting thing I could think of. I guess I'm going three dick. And one is on his head. And I would I would imagine that the one on his head would be like 
where a unicorn horn would be. Maybe we could dress it up. I don't know. Tie it back. Tie back his, his head dick. I don't know. Who thinks of these questions? These are this is my fan base. Um Okay, let's see. We're still going. Uh I will be at Skankfest Vegas, by the way, guys. That's gonna be in October. No, I don't have an Amazon wish list. Um Never wipe completely or have bad breath forever. Someone asked me that. I mean, if I have bad breath forever, the question is, can I use gum or Listerine or anything? Or is the breath so bad that it can't even combat that there is no solution? You know what I mean? Bad breath forever is terrible, but never wiping completely is also disgusting. And I feel like that would breed like bacterial infections. I can't be walking around with a half wiped ass. Um... These questions that people send are mentally ill. That's why I love doing this podcast. If you had to choose between an extremely itchy private area or extremely itchy butthole, which would you choose? I think butthole. Because an itchy pussy is embarrassing. It's uncomfortable. You don't know what's going on. There's lots of crevices. An itchy butthole, it's like... I don't know. I feel like I feel more open with my butthole than my private area. Why am I answering these? Someone says, why the socks? Because I love socks. Um, Having colorful socks can brighten up your day. You You know, sometimes when you're feeling sad and you open up your drawer and you see Mr. Rogers fucking face staring at you, you know you're going to have a good day. Why not? You know? And it's a great way to support the podcast. Oh yeah, dot com. Three O's H Y E A H dot com. Discount code Sarah 10. Okay. Casual plug there. Um, dude, I got through euphoria and I'm, I'm a different person. They don't tell you. They don't prepare you for this. I think that, um, what else do I want to get into? You guys hang on. I got more quiet. I got more thing. Bang in the psych ward with bangs hits different. That's so true. When I went to the psych ward, my bangs were all fucked up and I looked in the mirror and I thought, wow, I truly look insane. It was some girl interrupted shit. No, anytime you have a girl interrupted vibe, things are bad. Anytime a bang is like stuck to your head or crusted up, you look insane. That's why I don't know if I'll ever have bangs again, because bangs, you can tell a lot about someone's mental health by their bangs. A greasy bang, it's like, sweetie, I'm sorry, what's going on? Let's talk about it. A short bang, someone had a manic episode, took scissors to their head. A dandruffy bang, someone hasn't been fucked right in years. You know, your bangs say a lot about you. Your hair in general says a lot about you. Rainbow hair says, I need help. Dark hair says, he left me or she left me. Blonde says, I need attention. Red says, I'm different. (laughs) Me breaking down the different types of hair. This is, this is... the beauty of a solo podcast you start out talking about whether or not you'd ever live in arkansas and then you end up on this do you know what i mean um worst food at a comedy club i'm gonna go i already answered that i said fruit salad which by the way great choice fruit salad do you ever will we ever get to have samples at grocery stores again that is the question of the hour guys i miss the days of just going to costco with my mom because i don't have a costco card now but i know i'm getting older because the thought of having a costco card really excites me like i'm wet just thinking about the thought of piling paper towels into my cart and getting them at a great rate and being able to supply my family with food. 
<laughs> at a low, low price. That's how I know I'm old. The thought of going to Costco literally makes me so excited. But more importantly, the thought of going to Costco with samples. Will we have samples ever again or, or are samples gone for forever? Will the sample make its way back to the ice cream shop? Um, we're getting rid of masks. Bring back samples. I need it. You know, sometimes a sample at a grocery store can change the course of your entire week. You could be having the worst week ever. Someone comes, hey, you want to try this sharp cheddar with a piece of apple? You're back in the game, baby. You could be walking down the aisles looking for tampons and then out of nowhere, someone hits you with a little brownie bite. It's a new day. You're reborn right in the aisles. So I think that for morale reasons, we need to bring back samples in the grocery stores. I can't live in a world where samples don't exist in grocery stores and ice cream shops anymore uh if we're gonna enter world war three bring back the samples it's the least we could do okay um i passed by a mini golf thing on the freeway and i thought "Eh, i should do that and then i probably won't do it but it in the moment it seemed fun when you're in the car, things on the side, uh, roadside attractions seem more fun than they really are. Like the Dinosaur Museum out by Palm Springs. You think it's going to be something. You really do. I paid. It's like a roadside attraction where you can see like, some dinosaurs. I don't know. It's weird. It's like it's a little park of prehistoric things and you can pay $30 to go inside of it. I begged my ex-boyfriend to go with me to the dinosaur park and it was overrated but in the moment from the side of the road it seems like an escape it seems it seems like a a beacon of hope i remember i went to a banana museum the whole entire shop was like a roadside attraction banana museum and the entire thing just had bananas like it was kind of out by the salton sea in southern california i don't know if you guys have heard about the salton sea but the salton sea used to be this resort area for Hollywood in the 1950s. They were trying to rebrand it as being the French Riviera of California. And so they used a man-made lake to do that. And somehow the <clears throat> it, there was not supposed to be a body of water there. So there's an environmental crisis that happened in the Salton Sea. And now there's masses mass amounts of sodium in the in the water so like all these fish died and it's an environmental disaster you can look it up but it used to be this like resort area and on the way to the salton sea i went to a banana museum and so i thought the banana museum was gonna be something when you're in the car for a really long time and you see something on the side of the road you think wow now that looks like a good time and when you get in there it's never as good as it appears. Is that a metaphor for life? Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. I always think like in my head I hype up the break. I'm like, I'm going to Vegas. We're going to start stop in Barstow. And in your head you think things are going to be good in Barstow. And then you get to Barstow and you're like, eh. Eh. I just peed and had an in and out burger. Now a bitch is back. I don't know. I can't imagine doing a road trip with a family because doing a road trip with friends is already a lot. Imagine doing it with a family as a parent. That's a different experience than being a kid on a road trip with your family. Because when you're a kid on a road trip with your family, you can act up. You could be on your worst behavior and it's okay because you're just a kid. And your parents have to deal with it. But if you're a parent that's having to bring a kid on a road trip, I feel like that's emotional warfare. Um, yeah. So was I planning on getting into road trips? No, I I wasn't. I have some other things I want to talk to you guys about that I have written out here. Um, how come it's so hard to, there is nothing worse than trying to, sip a milkshake with a hole in your straw that can ruin a day that can ruin a week I could be having a great week 
I order a milkshake. Um, you know, if you're ordering a milkshake, you're already really excited about the thought of eating a milkshake because you're treating yourself. At least I am. I'm not like a milkshake bitch. I don't live in Arkansas. I can't eat milkshakes every other day. So there is nothing more disappointing than hyping yourself up for a milkshake, getting the milkshake, getting a straw, sipping it, and then the straw has a hole in it and the milkshake's too thick. Has that ever happened to you? Sound off in the comments below. Um, yeah. Was I planning on talking about milkshakes with, with straws with holes in them? No. And that's the benefit of a solo podcast. I zig when you think I'm going to zag, you know? <sighs> Why are crystals so expensive? Crystals are just rocks that people sell. Like, you could sell a crystal in LA for thousands. You can go to a store. You'll walk in. There'll be a big-ass amethyst. Thousands. And bitches but be buying them. You know? Whatever whatever to make you feel better during these times. I feel like we, leave, we have to lean into our comfort things. For some people, it's crystals. For other people, it's potato salad. You know? Okay. Guys, we're going to wrap this podcast up. It's a short pod this week because your girl, Shank, has a cold. It feels like... My brain is fully congested at this point. Um, but what was I going to say? Oh, I wanted to touch on the salsa bar because I have such bad anxiety at salsa bars and it's because there's a, a subtle pressure that happens at the salsa bar. While I'm in line putting the salsa into the containers, I can feel the person behind me pressuring me to hurry up and there's something about the skill of putting the lids on top of the little cups as the timer is just going because you feel like you're hogging the salsa bar what I'm saying is we need more spacious salsa bars I want a salsa bar where there is a ladle of salsa for everyone and there is no line and there is no pressure I, I decided I would close out this podcast by just spending a little bit of time talking about the salsa bar. See, when I go to the salsa bar, I look for a variety of salsas. I'm looking for a pico de gallo. I'm looking for a green salsa. I'm looking for a rojo salsa. Um, I'm looking for a brown salsa. I love a brown salsa. A brown salsa hits different than a green or a red salsa. It, it's subtle yet refined. Was I planning on reviewing my salsas? No. But that's the beauty of a solo podcast. I will now review my favorite sauces for you. Number one sauce of all time, buffalo sauce. Number two sauce of all time. Mm, I'm going to go with... Fuck teriyaki or sriracha teriyaki sauce mm. teriyaki under the right circumstances though because there's nothing worse than having teriyaki sauce in the wrong place teriyaki on the right thing can make or break a meal uh teriyaki is the gift that keeps on giving so we're going buffalo sauce teriyaki then i'm going mm, like a ponzu of soy, sriracha, I don't know. Did I hit all the sauces? I'm sure I missed some sauces. I wasn't planning on listing sauces, but you know, you never know what you're going to get when you check in with an episode of Shank. Catch a bitch listing sauces. I hope your Wednesday is amazing. Um, I urge you to come see me do stand-up. Got a bunch of new show dates. I'll be in Ontario Improv tonight. More dates in LA soon. I'll be at Skank Fest Vegas in October. And yeah, I'm hoping to get out to New York and Texas before the fall. So make sure to tune in for more dates. And at Princess Shank on Instagram and Twitter. You know where to find me. If you're looking for a bitch, that's where, you, that's where I'll be. I post all my show dates. If you're enjoying the Shank podcast, leave a review. Um, I love talking to you guys and hearing from you. 
Also, if you haven't listened to this bitch podcast with me and Kimberly Congdon, you're missing out. That podcast is so much fun. It comes out every Monday. Uh, YouTube this BTCH. We don't we don't keep the eye in, okay? Because we're classy bitches. We don't keep the eye in. Uh, so follow us there and um, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. New episodes of this every Wednesday. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for continuing to support the show. This was episode 201 of my podcast. So I've been doing this for a while and I just want to keep growing the show. And I've been very consistent and I appreciate all the loyal listeners that I've developed along the way. Okay, guys, I hope you have the best Wednesday ever. Try to do something nice for yourself. You know, you can't control what happens outside your own door. Maybe stretch, meditate, have a cookie. All right. See you next week, Shanksters. I promise I'll never say that again. Shanksters.